So in this video, I'm going to go through interference topic one for grade 12 general physics. I was supposed to be doing remedial with my students, but nobody's turned up, so I might as well solve some problems. Okay, question number one. It says here that two light sources are meant to be coherent. So first things first, what is this coherent? Coherent simply means the waves are like smooth wave fronts. They would have the same wavelength, they'd be having the same phase difference, same frequency. The idea is they are moving together in a smooth way. The crest and the crest will be walking together, the trough and the trough will be walking together, along like that. Just imagine two dolphins jumping around in the ocean. And you've seen them jumping around, they're kind of doing it together. And it looks really nice. So we're looking for answers which have something like same frequency, same wavelength, same color, um, same phase difference. And let's have a look. Well, that's correct. B is more correct because it does say frequency and it mentions the phase difference. So I'm actually going to pick B for this question. Amplitude is not important. It could be a high amplitude, it could be a small amplitude. The phase difference will still be the same and the frequency and the wavelength will still be the same. Amplitude is simply the height of the wave and they join together anyway. They'll add up to make a bigger wave anyway or a smaller wave if it's destructive. Okay, so sunlight is an example of, well, sunlight has a mixture of all the lights. You have all the lights passing through the sun. You know that because you can see the rainbow. Um, you can see all the different colors, sunset, sunrise, the different colors of light you can see from the sky. So it's not monochromatic for sure. It's not a laser because it's not pinpointing. There's light shining in all directions. And in this case, because we have all the different colors of light, each color has its own wavelength. It must be incoherent. So light is shining out in all directions and all the colors of light will be coming out. And you can, of course, check that if you have like a little prism or a little glass block and you, sh and you see the sunlight passing through, you kind of see the rainbows of the, the rainbow of the colours. Okay, anyway. Monochromatic light has a single something. So the first word is mono and then the second part is chromatic. Mono means one. Chroma means colour. I think it's a Greek word. Mono is one. Chroma is colour. So something that has one colour. Every colour has its own wavelength. Red will have a different wavelength, blue will have a different wavelength, and so on. So we're looking for something that mentions wavelength. And of course we got it here. You could say frequency as well, because frequency is related to the wavelength with the formula that we don't need V equals F lambda. These two are constant for different colours. So you could have found something that says frequency as well but this formula is not needed so I'm not going to write it and leave it there okay so we've got the wavelength question number four dark fringes why do we have dark fringes so if you remember for interference you get two types constructive and destructive so of course we know that C and D are nothing to do with the answer constructive interference is when two waves will meet in phase right so the crest and the crest will meet, trough and the trough will meet, and you'll get a big wave. Destructive interference, which is what the dark fringes will become, will be the opposite. It'll be like that, and it'll be maybe like that, the opposite. If they're exactly opposite, they will cancel each other out. Imagine this was plus one, and then this side here was minus one. The plus one and the minus one become zero. You'll get darkness. It'll be just no light. On the wall, you will see a nice bright spot, you will see a dark spot, a bright spot, a dark spot, and so on. Like this, you will see this interference pattern. When the wave passes through, the wave is going to be approaching it. They might be approaching it that way, or that way, the dark spots will be like this. So, that means destructive will be for dark. Constructive for bright. What happens when it's constructive? So we're looking for something about bright. It says amplitude. So remember down here I said the amplitude increases. It means the brightness will increase. If it's decreasing, or in this case cancelling out, it becomes dark. So that means we're looking for something that will mention the amplitude increasing. And we have it. B. The amplitude will increase. Now over here, destructive happens when something meets something. I've just mentioned it here, the crest and the trough. 
the maximum, the minimum, the top, the bottom. Whatever words you want to use, we need to understand what's going on. So I'm looking for crest and the trough. So it's not A, crest and the trough, B is good. C and D are no good. These are both maximum, these are both crests. Troughs, no. B is the answer. Okay. Two coherent lights shining through the same paper with respect to the crest and troughs. Darkness will occur where? Well, it should be destructive interference. Darkness means destructive. So I need to see a crest and a trough. Crest, crest, no. Crest, trough, yes. Trough, no. Darkness cannot occur, no. B is the answer. So over here, question eight. To make a sustained interference pattern, which conditions must be met? So we should have coherent light. This should be coming in at the same time, same wave fronts, should be nice and smooth. Monochromatic, yes, it should be the same wavelength. So the length of the wave should be the same so that they can cancel each other out. If I have a big wavelength and then I have a small wavelength, they will not cancel each other out because the crest and the crest may meet at some point, but the troughs and the troughs will not meet afterwards. You will not get a clear interference pattern. So we need these two things to work. Same amplitude, as I mentioned earlier, is not important. It's just the brightness. They will join together and become bright anyway, or dark anyway. So it's not important for them to have the same amplitude. In this case, one and two. Just a quick note, to just remember the wavelengths, I like to write Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv. What is this? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet which is basically here. We have blue, indigo, violet. Indigo is just a fancy word for purple, to be honest. A lot of people don't know what that is. Why did I write this? Because on the left-hand side, red, the wavelength is big. On the right-hand side, blue, indigo, violet, wavelength is small. So if you ever have to compare wavelengths, you will know that red is bigger than yellow, green is bigger than blue, orange is bigger than indigo, and red is the biggest. Violet would be the smallest. So that might just be a little tip for some exams. Why does interference not occur when you have two flashlights? So if you think about flashlight, it's a white light that's coming out. A white light is a mixture of all the colours, which means it's not monochromatic. And another thing is, for white light, we can see that this is not monochromatic, it could be C, neither coherent nor, so it could be C or D. It is not coherent, White light has got a light going out in all directions. The smooth wave fronts are not there. So which means I know that C is eliminated because it said coherent. It is neither coherent nor monochromatic. That's a good one. This is why you won't get it because the wavelengths of different colors are there and they're not moving in a smooth wave front in phase with each other. Why did he place a single slit? Well, to make it coherent. So you had a little slit, maybe like this, before you had your double slit. All the wavelengths are coming in, perhaps from all different directions, and it's not coherent at all. Only some wavelengths will pass through. Only some wavelengths will pass through. So that will keep it nice and coherent wavefronts. So I'm looking forward to make the light waves coherent. I am looking for B. That's a good answer. Looks like somebody has joined and disappeared. You can go away. Um, okay, question 11. The destructive and constructive interference of light passes through closely spaced slits produces what? Constructive, deconstructive? You will get interference bands, interference fringes, fringes or bands, which is the dots that you will see on the wall. Question 5, not 5, question 12. Where did 5 come from? I don't even know. Um, okay, question 12. The bright and dark fringes, we've went through it all the time. Bright and dark, both is constructive and destructive. A little typo here, that should be a U. Anyway, over here, it's literally repeating the same questions. I'm hoping we're getting the idea now. Bright, constructive. Dark, destructive. So A is good for this one. Question 14, you have blue light with this wavelength. It's not important because there's nothing to calculate. You will see on the wall, you will see, not red, so let me change it to blue. Do I have blue? Yeah. You will have 
blue nothing blue nothing blue nothing so what that means is blue with darkness blue darkness bright dark bright dark bright dark so i'm looking for alternating blue and black this is bright this is dark fairness question number 15 if a wave from one slit from young's double slit setup arrives at one point wavelength what does it say one wavelength behind it so that's one full wavelength right so if you see that and then it's passing through it's passing through but i start my next wave one full wavelength that's a wavelength here it's going like this a full wavelength they are in phase so that means you'll see a bright fringe i think one of my students have turned up so i'm going to stop this video and help them thank you false alarm nobody came so i am still sitting in my remedial session okay so where was i question 16 what do you observe on the screen in Young's double slit experiment if white light is shining? So if you have a, a white light, I kind of mentioned it earlier on, the colours of the rainbow will be inside it. You have all the different colours. So as it shines, each colour will bend a little bit differently so that you will get a nice white central fringe, white central band, but you will see all the colours coming out on the other side. You will see red, blue, green, everything, and you'll have those things interfering with themselves. So a white central fringe is good, not dark, and you will see coloured and dark fringes on either side. So this is good. You'll have the white and then a bit of the rainbow on either side, and some darkness as well. So that's C being the answer. In Young's double slit experiment, what happens to the intensity as you go further away? Well, the brightness in the centre will be quite high. But then as you go further away, it will get darker, darker. Darker, darker, darker. It's not as strong, which means as you leave the central band, it will decrease. The brightness will decrease. So in question 18, we've got to do some calculations. You can see that we have some wavelength, and luckily for topic 1, there's only really one formula. The formula for the first one is just going to be m lambda equals x d over l. That's the rule that we're trying to figure out. So what does that mean? You will have two slits, two slits, one and two. The distance between the two slits we call d. The distance between the slits or the separation between the slits is d. That's d there. And then this is placed, let's say, a certain distance away from a screen. The distance is placed from a screen we call l. So that's the distance between the slits and the screen. Okay, then you have the fringes the brights, the darks, or whatever, you have the fringes, and the distance between each fringe, from here to here, we call that x. So that's the fringes over here. So we've established what the d is, which is the slits. If you see the word slit, you're looking for d. And you see x, if you see anything relating to the bands, the fringes, like this, distance between the fringes, that is going to be x. Usually a small number, usually a small number. Length is the screen, how far away it is. That's usually a little bit bigger, it's usually in meters. And I can see it here, a screen located 3.5 meters away. So I've got all the information that I need. M is basically telling me which band am I looking at. The center bright band is just zero, there's nothing here. This is the first band. It's bright, but this is the center, there's no difference. This is the first bright band after the center, the second bright band, third bright band, fourth, and so on. Same on the other side, first, second, third, fourth. The distance between here is the same as the distance between here, so I only need one side. The first bright band, second bright band, whatever that will be, that will be M. So if I'm solving a problem and I'm still not entirely sure what's going on, I like to write this out here. M equals lambda equals X equals and that is supposed to be lambda and d equals l equals i'm not going to take this long on every question i'm just doing it once so you can all understand what's going on so it says between m and one that is just m equals one and it says here a wavelength is six times ten to the two nano what does that mean six times ten to the two times ten to the minus nine 
when you add these powers together, you will get 6 times 10 to the 2, means 600, by the way, and that's minus 9, 0 0.00006. So when you times them together, all you're doing is just simply adding the powers, basic maths over here. So this actually becomes 6 times 10 to the 2 minus 9 minus 7 meters. That's the answer in meters. 6.11 times 10 to the minus 7. What else do I have? I have this. Bright fringes separated. That is my x. 1.8 centimeters. That's not good. 1.8 should be in meters times 10 to the minus 2. You could do 0 0.018, whatever you want. But that's the answer for x. What else do we have? The screen. 3.5 meters away. 3.5. That is not d. That is l. The screen is l. 3.5 meters away. I need d. So I can rearrange the formula for D, or I can just use shift solve in the calculator. You can do it as you like. M is 1 multiplied by 6.11 times 10 to the minus 7. I don't even need to write it, to be honest. The 1 doesn't really do anything in the formula, but I've written it anyway. X, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2, and multiply that by the distance, which we have. The distance is we don't have. Divide that by my L. I have my L, 3.5. Sticking this into your calculator, what you will get is the correct answer. And I solved it earlier, and we got the answer of, I believe it was 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4. So please verify that for me. I will do the last two questions, and I will leave the video here. Two slits are separated by this, wavelength is this, the screen is this. What is the distance between the M and the M? So the distance between the bands, what is that asking me for? So that's not bands, that's not bands, wavelength isn't a band. Here are the bands, what letter is that? X. This question is asking me for X between the fringes, I need X. So we can write them all down again, but in this case, I'm not going to. I'm going to go ahead and put the numbers in, because hopefully by now you are professionals with this. X, D over L. 0 and 1, that is just going to be 1, multiplied by wavelength. 625 nano. So no tricks over here. So a 625 times 10 to the minus 9. Nano 9, NN, nano 9. That's how I remember it. That's always minus 9. X is what I need, so that will remain as X. Multiply that by D, which I have in this case. This is the D over here, the slit separation. So that will be 2 times 10 to the minus 5. Divide that by L, which we have as 6 meters. Again, putting that into your calculator, doing shift solve like I've taught you before, you should get an answer of 18.8 centimeters, so 0 0.018, for example. That would be the answer. Final question over here, it is asking now for the wavelength, it's asking for the wavelength. First order, wavelength is what I need, lambda. I have slits, this is D. I have a screen at a distance, so that must be my L. Do we have an X? Yes we do, bright band is found to be this far. So there we have everything we need, there is the D, that is the X, this is my M, this is my L. I need wavelength. M lambda equals M lambda equals X D over L. Sorry about the handwriting here. That is supposed to be X D. One times the wavelength. So that's just that. I don't even need to write it. I don't even need to do shift solve. I literally just solve these and I'll get the answer. X. Let's do it. Where is my X? 1.35 centimeters. So I'll do 1.35 times 10 to the minus 2. Multiply that by D, the distance, go away over here. The distance is between the slits. That's what D is, I've mentioned it up there. So 0 0.025 millimeters. 0 0.025 millimeters. So that's times 10 to the minus 3. Milli is minus 3. I'm dividing that by L, which I have 0 0.75. So if I stick this into my calculator, I should get something like 4.5 times 10 to the minus 7. And you might think, hold on, what's going on over here? This is 410, 450. You can probably guess this is the correct answer. This is in nanometers. My answer is in meters. To quickly change this into meters, I can literally divide this by 
10 to the minus 9, 909. If I do this little trick, I will literally get 450, exactly what I need. So the little trick here is to put it into nanometers, divide by that power. Nano is minus 9, so I'll take my answer, and I'll divide by 10 to the minus 9, and that leaves me with C. I'm going to stop the video there, it's quite long now. Thank you.